going to bring in three of my favorite experts to get their thoughts on today's action and just where we are, Bull Tech Capital Markets, their chief strategist, Catherine Rooney-Vera, Kaltbaum Capital Management, uh, their president, Fox News contributor, Gary Kaltbaum, and Ladenberg Thalman's Asset Management CEO, Phil Blancato. Gary, i got to start with you. Uh, you know, let's just kick it off. Moderna is saying that they've had some real good, uh, you know, stuff at a, at a trial, 45 patients. They all did extraordinarily well. AstraZeneca, which is back by back in that Oxford study, saying that they, they're having great success as well. So the market, could we be getting ahead of ourselves on, on the on, ahead of our skis on the notion that a vaccine is imminent? Well, look, this weekend I put out a note that I thought that the uh, opening of the economy trade uh, was about to rally as it uh, had a big run and then five weeks ago topped out and came right down to support. And that's what we're getting here. And I think this is what's uh, juicing it a little bit. Airlines, cruise lines, uh, industrials, chemicals, uh, you know, stuff like that is doing the trick here. And I think it lasts. Uh, there is repercussions, though, the extended uh, NASDAQ types, these things that have gone insane to the upside software over the last a uh, couple of months. They're now pulling in, but it looks pretty much normal. So I just think we have a changing of the guard right. here. But it also tells me if we get a vaccine, I think some of these areas uh, uh, previously mentioned uh, can explode to the upside, hoping for it. Yeah. And one thing I point out on this show every day is that uh, only 150 names on the S&P are higher for a year, and only a third on NASDAQ are higher. So, Gary, uh, before I go to the other folks, since you said you had it on your newsletter, would you be buying any of these things? Royal Caribbean's up 18 percent. Marriott's up 7 percent. United Airlines up 12 percent. Any of these worth a shot even as a spec buy? I like the airlines and cruise lines right here. Simple as that. Okay. Hey, uh, Catherine, I want to go to you. Uh, again, your thoughts. Are we over our skis in anticipation of a vaccine? Remember, five, six months ago, we were told to wait 18 months. Yeah, momentum is so strong, Charles, that good news is good news, and we're back to the old story, Charles, where bad news is also good news. I mean, just we had a couple of days ago um, bad news coming out of Miami. Now I'm in Miami. It's the epicenter of the universe for COVID. There's locals debating. There's you know, poor DeSantis is getting thrown under the bus. The point is, is that bad news for the virus is good news for the markets. Markets go higher. Why? Because we're all banking on the Fed. The Fed is going to backstop the markets and the Fed is going to introduce additional stimulus in the event that the virus uh, threatens the economic recovery and the market acceleration. Good news is also good news. So my point is the momentum what? trade continues. S&P continues to go higher. All right. And, and to that point, though, uh, the, the news is nuanced a little bit. Earlier, when the rally was almost completely gone and we were on the verge of going into the red, we saw the Florida cases were up uh, three and a half percent. The seven day average is four and a half percent. And the market actually bid up on that. Any moment now, we're going to get data out of California. Yesterday helped goose the markets higher. The day before, it sent the markets lower. And I want to talk about the blue chip rally because it's here. We've been waiting for it right now. You know, I'm not a big fan of the Dow. It's only 30 stocks. They don't have all the good names in there. But they are bidding the S&P. They are bidding NASDAQ over the last five, six days. And, and, and I'll ask you, Catherine, because every time people turn on TV, when they say the market, they mean the Dow. So how important is it that these blue chip names, including Boeing, which is on fire now, that they kind of take the lead for a while? Well, it's critical, Charles. Let's, let's face the facts. Since 2017, if one looks at the S&P 500, there's only been five names that have moved it. Everything else has been flat. The big five, Facebook, Microsoft, Google, Apple, um, right. uh, Amazon. These are the names that have taken us higher since 2017. This is a market that's based on tech. Now, tech can continue to move higher in this time period because we're so we're so exposed to, we're so required to, um, to use tech. Um, but I think that we're vulnerable if, right. in fact, the rest of the economy doesn't start to pick up. All right, the bottom line though is even great names can be overbought at some point. I want to bring Phil Blancato in here. Phil, over the last six months, I appreciate how you've come on this show and you provided this sort of succinct guidance, uh, when to pause, when to add. Where are you right now? As it looks like maybe, to Gary's point earlier, we do have something, even if it's short lived, this changing of the guards, maybe leadership in the Dow, maybe the S&P breaking out finally. That should open the gates for other opportunities. Yeah, if you look at the spread between large cap value and large cap growth, it's 32% through the year. It's incredible. So when you think about some of the names you mentioned, like a Caterpillar or some of the names that we've gotten used to, like a Home Depot, the, the core economy stocks, 
They've been under love for a while. So what you want to do in a market like this is buy balance sheets that are going to provide stability, and they want to make sure you maybe earn a little money, a little dividend along the way. And that's why you're, for the first time in a long time, starting to see the beginnings of a rotation and the breadth of the market, the number of stocks that are doing well Why now. Because you're right. The top 10 stocks in the S&P are up 10% this year, almost 12 now. The bottom 50 are still down 40%. So in that scenario, what do we want to do? We want to buy good names that are still not right. too expensive. And some of those right. names like a Costco, for example, while it's been up recently, I still like that name because it's a core economy stock that should do well regardless of what happens with the virus here in the next few weeks. Let's talk about the Federal Reserve. Uh, Governor Lyle uh, Brainerd yesterday, right around 220, 221, she had this conference call, only 130 people on it, but she said the central bank may need to pivot to accommodation. Gary, I know you want to probably blow your lid, but she was also backed up today by Boston Fed President Rosengren because he's echoing the same thing. Maybe yield controls, maybe forward guidance, maybe negative rates, but it looks like they're going to really do something with this toolbox. What are your thoughts? I'm glad I haven't eaten in a few hours. Um, look, Unfortunately, if the market drops 10 percent, they're going to print more money. If it keeps dropping, they're going to print more money. It never ends. Uh, for the life of me, I don't know what they're doing. They're, this is not economics 101. This is market control 101. Yes. And it's going to end very, very badly when all said and done. They think they're heroes because every right. time they do something, markets go higher. But it, it just creates bubbles while screwing every saver out there with zero percent interest yes. rates. I do not think they're going to go to negative rates, but I do think they'll buy stock and I do think they'll print the infinitum, and the ECB is doing the same thing also. Yeah, and they will have yield controls. Catherine, th about a minute left. Uh, sure. The, the, we're, we're, one, of my, one of my bullet themes is that we're all going to change our behavior. Almost everyone's going to wear a mask because they just say, okay, it's a better part of valor, or they're going to be forced to. We're hearing retailers now jumping into this fray. Do you think that helps with some of these closings, getting them open back again and getting back on track with an attempt for a V-shaped recovery? Yeah, I think we're in a V-shaped recovery. My question, Charles, is if it turns into, you know, the third leg of a W. But if I can go back to what Gary said, he's completely right. Gary's completely right. And I'll add one thing to your show, which is called making money. We can make money off of this trade. We can all agree that the Fed is going way above and beyond what its dual mandate is requiring it to do. Way beyond. And there are going to be repercussions down the right. line. Well, we can make money off of it. For example, Ford bonds. Ford is the can, only bond can, below investment grade that the Fed is currently buying. That bond we recommended two months ago, it's up more than 15%. You can find fallen angel bonds that the Fed wow. is going to start buying and make you money right now. Love that point, uh, especially today when I had to send in more money to the IRS to pay my taxes. Uh, Phil, I want to give you the last <laughs> word. Uh, just the most important things that you think uh, investors should know right now. I think they've got an opportunity to invest money in quality companies because, real quick, when the earnings rate on the S&P 500 is 400% higher than the 10-year than the U.S. Treasury, it means buy stocks. So here's a chance to buy good companies and enjoy the ride the rest of the year. All right, three of the best. We were blessed to have you all today on this really crazy day in the market where we could have a major breakout in two of the big indices. Catherine, Gary, Phil, thank you all very much. Appreciate it.